All right, guys, so in this video, we're checking out the Axis Flying Colas 6. So obviously we got a folding drone here for six inch propellers. Very interesting design. And I, for one, I'm pretty excited about new and sort of different designs from these manufacturers because I'm, you know, quite honestly, I get pretty bored with seeing kind of the same old five inch, you know, quad over and over again. Um, basically, it boils down to, you know, two sort of responses from the community for every new model. One, uh, oh, that's just a clone or a copy of XYZ that came out two months ago. Or three, or, or sec, or number two, oh, that's just a, a worthless design. Uh, it's never going to work. Um, I don't know why anyone made that. And so you probably fall into one of those two camps. I kind of fall in between, you know, I, I try and have an open mind about stuff. Um, I don't try and judge things just by looking at it. I want to fly it first before I actually make any determinations. So I actually have done that and you get the results of my flying tests in this video. But, um, you know, it was interesting is you might wonder, well, who wants a floating drone? Well, lots of people. I mean, there's my Mavic Air 2S and DJI, you know, they sell billions of dollars of drones, I guess. And folding drones do fly and work well. Obviously, you can get video because it's got a gimbal, a three-axis gimbal to stabilize the, the vibrations and all that. You don't have that with this system here. So, you know, how bad are the vibrations? Well, we'll talk about that in this video. So, obviously, I have it collapsed down like this. Uh, this little naked GoPro mount is not included. I added that, added that the screw and the nut is included. The uh, antenna comes out like this. You have to just stick it in uh, when you pull it out of the bag. So it does come with this bag. You get a spare set of the six inch folding props. These are the gem fan, floppy proppy, six inch, 6030s. thirties. Uh, by blade, you get an extra battery strap and some spare prop nuts, a few screws. And then this is the um, bag that comes in. This is a little velvet bag. And so this, you know, what it collapses down to in this form factor, it's pretty tiny. So, you know, just for comparison, here's an Air 2S. And, eh, somewhat comparable. Uh, just looking at my ruler, roughly around six inches tall, not including the naked GoPro mount. Uh, around five inches wide, the GPS sort of sticks out a little bit. And then uh, this dimension here is a little bit narrower, maybe about four inches. So the reason, you know, I'm, at least I'm told, the reason they're interested in making something like this is not everyone wants to carry a large drone in their backpack. So just for comparison, here's a Recon 6, uh, six, or six inch, you know, sort of a lightweight, uh, long range quad. You can see the footprint is pretty huge, even if you can take the props off it, you know, pretty big arms and everything. And so they want to sort of create that same functionality in a smaller package that you can put into your backpack. And that's what I did. I, um, there's a little demo of me pulling it out of my, I have like a sling bag, basically it's like a half size backpack. So I have the, the drone obviously collapsed in the bag along with my DJI FPV goggles and my transmitter and a very lightweight package. And so this is really intended for those, those of you guys that are maybe uh, hiking in the wilderness, you know, often places where you nece not necessarily want to carry around something really huge, or maybe you're carrying around a bunch of other gear, but you want to bring along a drone, but not have it eat up a lot of space. Maybe something for travel, if you don't want to eat up a lot of space in your luggage, you know, but you still want to get some longer flight times and some nice cinematic footage for some cinematic flying. This is not for FPV racing. This is not for bando bashing or, you know, FPV freestyle bando bashing. Definitely, uh, if you're one of those guys and considering getting this, I would recommend you don't get it for that because this is not for that. This is a very niche product here for someone, you know, really basically looking for these kind of characteristics in a drone that can give them longer flight times and some cinematic footage while traveling around and not taking up a lot of space. So this is really who this is for. Also, you know, regarding uh, folding drones, uh, there was a video, I think recently out from Umagod, you can check out his channel, 
there was like a community project or community build. I'm not exactly sure. I didn't really watch the whole video, but I guess there's a lot of interest in folding drones. And I think that's what they're, they're going to be building is some sort of a folding type of drone um, that's sort of being driven by that community over there. So go check out his channel if you want to see what they're going to be developing. Obviously, it's going to be really different from this because their design philosophy and approach is going to be completely different from Axis Flying. But I think that, you know, this sort of concept here is, I think, the future because um, people are looking for something a little bit more compact. You know, they don't want to necessarily advertise to the whole world that I have. I'm, you know, I'm carrying around an FPV drone, you know, on my backpack, you know, necessarily. So they want to be able to stick it away somewhere, like in their luggage and hide it away. Something like this is going to be more appropriate for that. Okay, so that with that all being said, let's go ahead and dig in a little deeper into this design. And what we have here are seven millimeter arms that fold out. There's a notch here in this arm. It is locked in with this sort of um, metal pin here. And this pin is on a spring and a lever that pulls up. So in order to lock and unlock, actually to unlock the arms, you have to pull up on this. So let me just demonstrate here. I'm gonna pull, has that joint upside down. I'm gonna pull down. You can see this actually slides in and out. If you pull on this, this pin will go up and down. And so when it's down, it's the arm is locked. So to un, obviously to, to lock the arm, bring it out, you pull it up and you can see it's on this little uh, screw right here. And there's a, a locking nut on this side that uses these two plates that act as landing feet. That's also the pivot point for the arm. But you don't need to pull this up to actually lock the arm, only to unlock it. And then this will pop up and it snaps into place. It's a nice, you know, pretty nice design. It's actually pretty well situated in there. It doesn't, I don't feel any, any sort of movement in the arm. Now, maybe over time it could get looser if there's grinding of the carbon there, but I don't think that's going to happen unless you're just constantly unfolding and folding it all the time. Um, I haven't noticed any carbon dust or anything like that. And then the carbon that they're using is very, very nice. It's, it's all clean. It's, it's, it's high quality. Um, and I don't, I don't feel like the arm is going to pop out for any reason because the only way for the arm to collapse back down is you have to, uh, it's, got, it's easier for me to do it this way, uh, pull the little pin out like this and then push the arm away and that'll unlock it and let me fold the, uh, fold the arm down. You want to make sure you don't smash the prop and then it'll, you can stick it in there like so. And that is how the mechanism for the arm works. Now, the top plate and this metal, there's like a metal aluminum plate here, it's like this bottom plate here, is what's holding these side plates together and in place so that uh, this arm whole mechanism doesn't move around. And that's how that's actually uh, sort of put together. I think if you bought the frame kit, I think putting this together is to do it to it to do your own build. I think is going to be fairly challenging. This is a fairly complex design. I I personally would not want to do a, a build of this. I think it it's going to be it's, there's so many parts and little things you have to make sure they're in place. Just considering the the proper order of putting everything together is just sort of uh, really super challenging. So I just don't think that's a for me personally, I would just, just buy the bind and fly. It's already fairly inexpensive compared to the parts and everything I have to buy. Um, but yeah, the, the frame kit is available, but it's, it's, a, it's a ton of parts here. You can see here that the motor is inverted on the arm. So I'll go ahead and I'll just pop all of the arms out. And you can see it, 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 it's, it's very, very, very easy to pop all this stuff out and lock the arms in place. You get a nice little click. Oops, watch that like so and then you see the motors are inverted there is this like metal uh, bracket here that holds the motor in place so there's a screw that goes through this bracket into the uh, base of the motor and that's holding it on to the end of the arm you got a little bit of carbon here that is um, protecting the end of the motor so the motor here uh, since we're looking at it it's the uh, Axis Flying branded AF223, and this one here is a 1610. 
1610 kV motor, obviously for a 6S setup. I think there's a 2900 kV motor for a 4 setup if you want to do that, but the 6S is the default recommended setup. And this is a 2203 sized motor, and obviously with a folding 6 inch prop. Now you're probably wondering, will a 7 inch prop work? It might. There's, there's definitely some space there. Obviously, it'd be about half an inch. It might work. I haven't tested it, but um, I don't think a seven-inch prop would be good for this motor because it's a, it's a it's a small motor. Six inches is going to be plenty, and you're going to get enough flight time on six inches. I, I don't recommend going to a seven-inch if you're wondering about that. You have these um, size again, like where the arms collapse down into this little two side plates. There's this. Um, you know, TPU part here acts as landing feet when you're landing, like so. You don't have a lot of clearance between where you're landing and the nut. And of course, with the prop unfolded like this, if you are if you land too far forward, lean like this, your prop is going to scrape the ground. You know, so landing this completely flat, I would recommend putting angle mode on a switch and make sure you're accelerometer is um, calibrated correctly and also turn air mode off so you're not bouncing off the ground. Uh, that's what I did. So I was able to successfully land without scratching the motor or the props, but it is fairly challenging and so uh, not, I not recommended for a beginner uh, for something like this. Uh, with the, you would have to be an experienced flyer to properly land this, but to do it, I think, safely or the easiest way to do it is to make sure you have air mode turned off. It comes with air mode turned on from the factory. So I turned it off and I put it on a switch. And so I would take off with air mode off and then turn it on when I'm flying around. And then before I land, I turn air mode off and then land with air mode off. And that's the best way. So the VTX antenna here is just flopping around here as you can see. And it, all you have to do is just slide it in place. Like so, it just slides in and out. Um, it's connected to the Vista. So they, obviously this is the DJI system with the Vista. You can, there's another version with the Vista, or the, I guess it's the Runcam Link version with the Runcam camera, if you prefer that. I think it's the Runcam Phoenix 2, or the Run, something Phoenix HD, or something like that. I prefer the Nebula Pro, because uh, you get the nice 4.3 image. I think the Runcam is a 16 by 9 camera. So, something to keep in mind. Uh, I think there's analog versions as well available, but I didn't really look at this. That didn't really interest me that much, but um, yeah, there's different versions and there's also different receiver versions. I think you can get Crossfire um, and then a new receiver. And this is the Express LRS version. This is their Thor receiver, 2.4 gigahertz Express LRS. The flight controller here on the bottom is the Hack RC F722, which I already did a video on. And um, it's like a whoop style flight controller. Uh, 40 amp ESCs, BL Heli S, and this one features the uh, little USB C extension port. You can see here that there's no way to connect to the board itself. There is a USB port on that on that board, but they use the extension to pop the uh, USB port here on the top. And I think when I did my review, I didn't have a USB port included in my package, but in my review. But this is where, uh, it should come with one if you buy it separately, but this is where they put theirs. And it's fine, it has plenty of UARTs for the GPS and all the other components like the DJI UART. Um, so, you know, it is BLES. They don't have um, a BlueJay firmware installed on this. I, you know, or RPM filter. You know, obviously you need BlueJay firmware to enable RPM filter. But the tune seemed pretty decent without any of that stuff enabled, so... I would say, you know, uh, unless you're really looking for like an ultra super fine tune, the factory tune seemed to be okay. I'm not going to bother retuning it because it seemed good enough to me. Now, one thing I did notice about this little hole here, this is where the, if you're wondering what this hole is for, there's the, the, the USB-C port for the Vista, and you'll need to get access to that for activation. But this little hole here is a little bit too small, so I had to use one of my special usb cables that had the has the sleeve cut off to fit through this hole because it's kind of a little bit too small and misaligned to where the USB port is so you if you use a regular USB cable it won't go into here uh, so I, I told them about this problem then hopefully they'll 
uh, make this print a little, redesign this print a little bit and make the hole a little bit bigger so you can fit a normal USB cable in there and activate your uh, Vista. Now, in terms of the flying characteristics, um, you know, you're seeing probably already some of the flight footage from the FPV feed and you don't see a lot of wobbles or vibrations or anything like that. There is a fair amount of wind. Um, I'm going to show you here a little bit later the line of sight. I did some line of sight footage. Uh, you can actually hear the props. Everything sounds nice and clean. I don't hear any like vibrations or anything weird in terms of a bad tune. It's everything seemed pretty good. And, and in terms of flying it around, uh, I didn't notice anything unusual in terms of like um, oscillations, uh, weird like you know uh, vibrations from a, from like the arms shaking or anything like that because you know everything's nice and solid. Uh, it feels kind of like a heavier 5-inch to me, like this sort of like underpowered 5-inch. That's what, to, to me, that's what it felt like. Um, now, I was running a smaller uh, 6S battery than what they're recommending for the maximum flight time. I don't have, um, I think they had they're recommending a 6S 1700. I have like a 1000, I think, here, 6S. Um, but if you want to get the maximum flight time, I think, which was with like the DJI Action 2, I think it was like 17 minutes or something like that, uh, put up on the screen. I wasn't really interested in, in measuring the exact flight time. I just felt like it was pretty efficient. I got pretty good flight times on just on like something that half the size. And then I specifically ran a naked GoPro on here, specifically the Hero 6, with this specific mount here, the way it's just hard mounted to the frame because I wanted to see how much vibrations were going to be coming from this prop and arm setup here to the camera. And there's a fair amount of vibrations that comes through to the 4K or the HD footage to the uh, GoPro. And you'll see that when I'm flying around. You don't see that in the FP footage at all. And that's I think that has to do more with this mounting setup here. And you're probably not going to see it if you're going to put a full GoPro on here like a Hero 10 or a Hero 8 because it has more mass. This is, I use this setup here, this specific mount to see what kind of vibrations I get from a lot of uh, drones that are specifically going to have some, potentially some vibration issues. It's not terrible. I kind of expected it from this setup here because um, it is, I don't know, it's just because, uh, you know, the, the way it's, the, 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 you have some folding props here and inverted motors, it's kind of an unusual setup. And then this is hard mounted here. It's specifically, it's specifically set up like this so I can get that that footage. Obviously, if you're going to put a naked GoPro in here or like a, like a GoPro Bones, you're going to probably want to redo this mount so that it has some sort of vibration isolation or dampening so you can get some better footage. And I'll probably do that because this is something I'm going to keep around for myself for, uh, you know, for travel and stuff like that because I think is going to be kind of useful. Last thing to note is while the GPS does work, I do get satellites. I don't get enough satellites in terms of the uh, the number needed for a lock for GPS rescue to work. I could only get a maximum of six or seven satellites. It requires a minimum of eight in the settings for GPS rescue to work. I don't know why this one is not giving me more satellites. It's possible it could be a, a change and I need to change the settings somewhat, or there could be some interference from the Vista. The Vista is buried inside here, as you know, and then there's a wire that runs past the Express LRS receiver. Maybe I need to put some shielding on that. I, I need to investigate that, that. I need to investigate that some more, so I might have a future video on this model. This is one I'm going to be keeping around. You'll see some more footage or coverage on this one later. But yeah, let me know if you have any questions or comments, and uh, I'll try and address them for later. Hopefully, this was a useful video for you. Let me know. What do you guys think of something like this for yourself? Um, do you like it, or would you just rather uh, have a, just carry around something bigger? Let me know in the comments below and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. All right, so I'm just gonna do a, like a line of sight test here first and let you guys hear what the props sound like. I'm sure you guys are really curious what that sounds like. All right, throttle up. That sounds pretty, pretty clean, actually. All 
our ground's a little wet. All right. <laughs> 